Hi, Doc. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? I'm smiling bright for you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> love it. <laughs> How are you? How's everything? Everything is awesome. Happy to be here. Happy to have a conversation with you about something that's important for everyone. Absolutely. And I think many people, as I was saying, do not understand that your oral health is almost the first sign to see what is going on in your body. It can really open the doors of other things that are going on. So explain to our viewers, why is oral hygiene at the forefront? Why is it so important to get those checkups to go see your doctor? You know, so one thing that's kind of crazy, I'm just going to call it crazy, is that we okay. treat oral health like it's a separate thing altogether from our overall health. When in fact, I don't think it, it takes Einstein to figure out that your mouth is connected to your body. So all of the blood vessels in your mouth connected to all of the rest of the blood vessels in your body. And what happens when you have disease in your mouth or disease in your body, all of those inflammation factors kind of just spread back and forth. So some of the side effects of systemic disease will manifest with diseases in your mouth and vice versa. So if you have like, you know, red puffy gums, which is gingivitis, or bone loss around your teeth, which is called periodontitis, that the inflammation factors related to those diseases can actually seed into the bloodstream and circulate and make all of these other systemic diseases worse. So it's, it's, a, it's a window into what's happening because you can see manifestations from some systemic diseases that are starting. Mm -hmm. But it's also a place where if you're not maintaining that oral health, you can actually exacerbate or make some of those systemic diseases worse. You know, recently, uh, National Institute of Health published an article and actually they, they document that your oral bacteria, the bacteria in your mouth, they've actually identified it as in association with over 60 systemic diseases and some big hitters like cardiovascular disease, stroke, and diabetes. Diabetes, you know, yeah. Things that, things that really impact your life. So, you know, I, I think it's becoming very, very obvious, the connection between the two. But it's also, I mean, we've, we've, Dentists have talked for years how right. important it is to keep your mouth clean. But I think we're now kind of putting an exclamation point at the end of that. You know, it's more important than just having healthy teeth and healthy gums. It's important to your whole body. Absolutely. And I love, Dr. Crowley, that you said that because I think it's true. Sometimes we set up our primary physician visits, right? And then we say, okay, we, we did our checkup, but we forget or we neglect our dental. And we say, oh, I haven't been to the dentist in years. And as you were saying, that can be such a precursor for other things that, that can happen. So how often should you be seeing your dentist? You know, the, a, a good rule of thumb is, is I'm going to like pull my old Chuck Woolery for all of you out there that follow up <laughs> connection. Two and two. See your dentist twice a year, brush your teeth, brush and floss your teeth twice a day. You know, there's a lot that goes on in your mouth every day. And it's, it's really important to make sure that you're maintaining those good practices to keep your mouth clean. And because that's not enough, you need to go see your dentist because prevention is so important. Right. Um, catching anything early. I mean, it, it, it's like a mantra for every type of, you know, of, of health related comment. If you start early, if you prevent early, you're going to stop anything from developing into something significant. And, you know, let's just be, let's just be real. When things develop into significant things in your mouth, they cause pain. They, they cost a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, and you can stop that by having these good regiments. Absolutely. I, I want to talk about a statistic that floored me and I, I mentioned it before, before letting you on, which is that 50% of the adult population has some form of gum disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty shocking, isn't it? You know, it and I is. think it, 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 it's, you know, and, and, you know, I'm all about grace you know, there's no shame in that statistic. It's just reality. And, and the, the reality is many of us don't have, have not developed those good home care techniques. Now, the really good news is that's starting to change. I think the right. word is getting out. We can change this, you know, but it's a, we do it together and we do it individually. And I think it's really important for people to really understand that this is within their control. 
you know, and skipping a day or missing a day is not a, you know, like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't floss my teeth today scenario. So it's not a shame scenario. It's like a do better tomorrow scenario. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the, the more we talk about it, the more we actually discuss how brushing and flossing your teeth prevent that disease from starting, the more people will get it into the repertoire of what they do every day. I'm so bad at flossing, Dr. Crowley. I am one of these people. I brush my teeth, but I floss like maybe once a week. And I know that's not fantastic. Can you share with our viewers what, what is recommended in terms for flossing every day? So every day is recommended. Yeah, every day, you know, if you think about, I mean, what, what causes gingivitis and periodontitis is, is plaque. And, and that, that plaque has got bacteria in it. And your body is reacting to that big to bacteria. <laughs> think about, you cut your arm and you have like, you know, red, swollen, you know, and maybe infected. Maybe it's just the body trying to heal. Well, that's what the body is doing in your mouth as well. All of that is, is a reaction to bacteria sitting there, kind of like stimulating the body to say, heal me. Well, right. what you do to make, to make that go away is floss. So brushing helps in the fronts and the backs of your teeth. You can just kind of like think about that and that makes sense. Your toothbrush can get to the fronts and the backs, but it can't get in between effectively. So doing that, flossing on a daily basis makes good, not only a, a good habit, but also makes good sense because if you're brushing, you're only brushing part of your teeth. You need to floss and take care of the other parts of your teeth that your toothbrush bristles can't get to. Absolutely. I think realistically too, Dr. Crowley, and I wanted to speak to you about this, is that many patients or those that do have some form of gums disease, it, it, it's probably worse because they don't have the access or they're afraid to get to the dentist because you said in the very beginning, things start adding up, costs. Yeah. And so they think, I'm not going to go. I, I don't have money to pay. What if they find something? What do we have to uh, you, you know, do a removal or an extraction? So how can we do better? Because so many people, especially young people, are not getting the dental care that they need because of this lack of access. Yeah, so, you know, the, where, I, where I would say first is if you feel like you are in this shame place because you haven't gone, please try to remove that from your thinking because the goal here is to get in get taken care of, get, get the care that's needed because it's, it's important not only for your mouth, but again, for your body. We're really seeing that as, as so important now. So establish a relationship with a dentist because you know if you have that connection with a dentist and a dental hygienist, you're more likely to go in as opposed to, oh, I need to go to the dentist. Oh, I gotta find a dentist. That's right. three more steps that you need to try to figure out. And there are great ways to actually go do that. You know, we have a provider directory at deltadentalins.com that will help, you know, identify dentists that are, that are affiliated with our company and, and under contract to deliver benefits for our company. So that's a great way to find a dentist. But beside that, the best thing is to, do, number one, to establish a dentist. And then number two, go see that dentist and follow what they have to say. Uh, they have to go through a diagnostic process. I mean, if you're going to go to a physician because you have some you know, knee problem or heart problem, they're going through a diagnostic process. So don't go in and say, hey, I need to get my teeth cleaned and expect them that they're going to clean your teeth like right, right then. They have to go through a diagnostic process and the treatment you need might not be just a cleaning. It might be more. Um, access is 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 really important cost is a huge barrier for a lot of people so yeah. again take the shame out of this conversation because the goal is health so if you have those cost problems talk to your dentist also look for other sources because you know there are health departments out there um, there are other resources that you can tap into, you know, Google a, a lot of, you know, like lower cost dental care and you'll find some resources out there. But again, establish that relationship and perhaps, you know, just even talking to your dentist, you could say, hey, I can afford this. They're health, they're healers. They're right. trained to be healers. So they're going to talk to you about that. You know, you mentioned access. So I think this is a really good place to talk about like, access to dentists in general. You know, I would say, you know, we're in South Florida, you know, a very 
very Latin oriented population, you know, and, and we see underrepresentation in the dental community by, you know, black and brown, uh, the community and black and brown and, and moms, dads, if you're out there, if you have kids that are looking, have a conversation with them about going to den into the dental profession, into dental careers, going to dental school, become a dentist or a dental hygienist or a dental assistant. You know, it's a, you know, access is beyond just having a dentist there. Right. I, I talk to so many people who, who want to go to a dentist, but they don't feel comfortable. And part of that comfort is they want to look up and, you know, it's an intimate space between a patient and a dentist. They want to see someone that looks like them. So that underrepresentation, I think we can't really undervalue how important it is for all of us to have a conversation about how needed uh, we need to, to bring in uh, people. I remember when I was practicing and I would have Spanish speaking children come in, I felt like I wasn't helping them as much as I could because they couldn't speak to them in their, right. in their language. So, you know, think about like the comfort level. I mean, it's not fun to go to a dentist. I mean, if, if you love- Right, it could be a scary, rare. it's a yeah, scary, scary experience to begin with. And if you are not, feel, if you feel that sense of judgment or, or as you said, sometimes you come in with a little bit of shame or you not, you, or maybe you don't feel connected. It, it's like a very personal relationship. It really is. And you make such a valid point. It, 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 it is, and, and I, I had a, phenomenal assistant who translated for me and I learned, you know, Denta Espanol, you know, Abre la boca, por favor. So, <laughs> you know, los I dientes, por favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, but that wasn't having a conversation. So I, I love the idea of bringing more Latin representation into the dental community. Uh, that will help access to, and I don't think, like I said, I don't think we can really guess how much that comes into play because we generally think about dentists are available, go see them. But we need right. to think more deeply into that, into that access question. When you speak about that, and we talk about representation as well, but there's also a certain population in South Florida, we're talking a very elderly population in South Florida who obviously is on Medicare. So how does that work with, with visiting, their, getting their dental benefits even as they get older? So here is a little known secret that pretty much everybody on Medicare knows. Dentistry is not in core Medicare. So imagine, you know, you're, you're at retirement age and you've had dental insurance your entire life. Right. And so that has helped defray the cost. It has helped you maintain a relationship with a dentist, all that good stuff that's gone through your whole life. You retire and suddenly you don't have dental insurance anymore. And that's kind of a shock because that, that, that net of safety that, that the dental insurance kind of brings you, you know, aside from helping to defray the cost, but it gives you an alternative, like, hey, I, my dentist wants to do this. Hey, dental insurance company, Delta Dental. Is this right? right? We give some assurance on top of uh, just the benefit payments. So, you know, there's a value there and then it goes away. So there are options out there. So there are plan options out there. Many companies are, are extending de their dental benefit plans to, to the retiree populations, and that's great. Um, a lot of Medicare Advantage plans, look for ones that we have some great options out there uh, for, for Medicare Advantage dental plans that are embedded in, or alongside some of the health plans in Medicare Advantage. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it's and when we have also have some individual plans where you can just come directly to us and, and purchase an individual plan. Those are those are great options. And they can come directly to you and have this consultation and sort of pick out or customize what might work be better for that individual. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Some people want to go wherever they want to go. Now, maybe they're travelers and they want to go in multiple states and they want to have insurance that goes everywhere. Right. Then there, there are plans that help fit that lifestyle. There are some that stay put. You know, they, they want to establish a place. They don't really care about like selecting anybody out there. There are great options for that as well. So, you know, consult, consulting with our teams and, you know, give us a call. You know, we'll, we'll just talk it through with you and help find the right plan for you. Let's talk kids, Dr. Crowley, because mm -hmm. we need to start uh, that oral hygiene starts very early. I know in my house, I have a 10 year old and a six year old and the battle for the two, for brushing teeth sometimes is... It's not fun. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, or they brush and it's like, I'm done. And I'm like, you've been in there literally 15 seconds. That does not yeah. count. So well, and, and let's be real. You, you, that might happen with adults too. Yes, after, <laughs> right, because, because you're supposed to technically brush for two minutes. Isn't that right? 
Ideally, yes, two minutes is the, is the time. And believe me, those are the longest two minutes of your life, but they might be the most important two minutes of your day too. They are, <laughs> and you can do so much in two minutes, right? You can think about all the things you have to do that day. But for kids, right. how can we instill that oral hygiene, the importance of oral hygiene so it can continue to adulthood and we create those healthy oral habits? Yeah, you know what, I love jumping from the older population to the kid population, because that really emphasizes the value of oral health over a lifetime. Right. Starting early is really important. You know, there's this mantra, you know, go to the dentist, buy one, take them by one. And many people don't think that way, simply because they don't have teeth yet. So I should take them. Well, they get their first teeth around six months. So it does a couple of things. It starts that habit of going to the dentist. Um, it introduces, because the dentist isn't going to do treatment to a one-year-old. They're going to they're gonna put him in the chair. They're going to get him used to going back and forth, and it becomes kind of a little bit of a game. And it eases them into kind of that relational, you know, hey, going to the dentist is more fun. It's, you know, it, it, it's not scary. So, right. but, but it also helps the dentist take a look in the mouth, identify, you know, the gum tissue is still there as a, even though there are no teeth, the mouth is still there and dentists are looking at more than just the mouth. And I think that's kind of a, a misnomer. Dentists go to dental school and they learn about the whole body. They learn about the entire body's anatomy. So what they do is they specialize, you know, from the neck up. So they're checking neck area, they're checking lymph nodes, they're checking this whole area of your body inside your mouth as well as in that area. And that's what they'll do with the child too. So, you know, just getting the child used to having that person that close, being, you know, checking that part of the body uh, mm -hmm. is really important to minimize that. And then they've started that develop, to develop those habits that are gonna carry them through their life. Uh, you mentioned that 15 seconds, you know, this is where parenting gets tough. You know, you got to make yeah, sure, I, you just got to make sure like they the, do it. The dab of the toothpaste and I'm like, let me see how much toothpaste you have on that brush. And it's a speck. And I'm, I, I'm, I have to oversee because I think that's so important that they know they need the paste, they need to brush up, down, and as well floss because kids need to floss too. Yeah, kids need to floss too. And that, believe me, that's a tough, I, with my kids, that was, a, that was a tough thing, you know, like, hey, if you, you got to floss. And, you know, okay, I'm a dentist, so it made it a little bit easier <laughs> conversation with me and right. my kids. But, it, you know, again, demonstrate it to your kids. You know, it's kind of like, you know, when you get on the plane and they say, put your mask on before you put the mask on your kid. Right. It's the same thing. Demonstrate good, those good oral habits to your kids so that they see you do it. They'll want to be like you. Uh, you know, believe me, when they get to teenagers, that'll change. But when they're young, they want to be like you and they'll ask for your help and just volunteer and help them. They'll get it. You know, I, I went to ask, there is now that besides the flossing, the traditional, we have those water picks. Is there a difference or do you recommend yeah. those? So if you think about like the way the tooth goes up in your gum, there's this little area around the tooth that actually goes, is like an open space. And the goal of flossing is to clean that out. Uh, it's, you know, it's a fairly, it's, I mean, it's in mil measured millimeters, so it's really small. So, you know, you get the floss up there, the string floss up there. Mm -hmm. So, but the goal is to clean that out. So there are great, great solutions with water pick options, and it's a brand, but, you know, water irrigation devices mm -hmm. that will help. What I like to tell some patients that a lot of people love using those things. And I, I say, use what works best for you. So if you use those things, still use the string floss a few times a week. And I think when you start to realize and start to feel how healthy your mouth feels, you know, I, I had patients that said, hey, when my mouth got really healthy, food tasted better. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I, I love to eat. So if that's a goal <laughs> of yours, this is a then great absolutely. goal. If you love food, this is a great way to make it even better. Absolutely. Okay. So another, I had another question because sometimes we're, we're hearing this debate, which is the electric toothbrush is so much better than a regular toothbrush. This cleans better because, you know, this is what the dentist use. So let's talk about that, Dr. Curley. Does it matter what you use? So you know what the best toothbrush is? The absolute best toothbrush is? Share. One, what is it? The one you will use. So <laughs> some people love, there are, there's a lot of research that, that talk about those ultrasonic toothbrushes and they do a lot of really good work. They, 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 those, those, that vibration really does help loosen up mm -hmm. some of that plaque and bacteria so that you can rinse it away. So, you know, that's, that, that those are great solutions, but they're also expensive. 
So, you know, manual toothbrushes are just as good. They're a little more technique sensitive. So, you know, because you're actually doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. I personally love a manual toothbrush because I'm a little bit of a control freak. So I can make sure I do it exactly the way Get I want Get every to. little, every little crevice in there. Every little nook and granny, exactly. So yeah, I, I, it's the one you'll, it's the one you'll use. That's the easiest answer. Same thing with toothpaste. It's the one you like. You know, look for the ADA uh, acceptance seal because they're looking for, the chemicals, uh, chemicals, it, fluorides in toothpaste, to make sure that they have, so that seal is important. There's all these other things in there, the flavoring agents and the anti, you know, plaque agents and things like that. All of those are meaningful, but really pick the one that you're gonna use, but make sure it has an ADA seal of acceptance so that okay. it does have those fluoride components that will help harden and strengthen your teeth. Great tips. Uh, Dr. Crowley, as we wrap, any final thoughts or anything you'd like to share with our viewers when it comes to whether it's oral hygiene or getting access to the right dental care? So I'm gonna say, I'd have to hang up my dentist card if I didn't say this. If you haven't been to the dentist lately, please go. Um, find a dentist if you don't have a relationship, establish that relationship because it will pay off in the long term. Uh, the other thing, you know, COVID has created a whole lot of fear Dentists have done a phenomenal job adjusting their sterilization techniques, uh, adjusting to make sure patients stay healthy and stay Absolutely. safe. So if you if that fear is what's keeping you away, call your dentist and ask them. So, you know, what assurances have you put in? What techniques have you put in place to keep me safe? They'll discuss those with you because again, they're healers. Their goal is to get you in to make sure that you stay healthy, treat what they need to treat diagnose what they needed to diagnose. And again, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll also say this, going to the dentist twice a year to get your teeth cleaned is really important, but there's over 8,000 hours. That's two hours of your year. There are over 8,700 more hours. So that home care, that it's development crucial. of habits is really important, it's crucial. And like I said, I mean, this will be the exclamation point. It's not a, only crucial to that smile, keeping your teeth for a lifetime and your, it's crucial for your whole, whole body health. Absolutely. Dr. Crowley, such a pleasure having you on the South Florida PBS Health Channel. Yeah. Thank you so much again for sharing all your tips and our viewers can watch this now. I'll be posting it. They can rewatch it again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Have a good Bye -bye. day. Have a great weekend. You too. Bye.